So it's in the same lens, the same idea that you and I might have a different relationship than your peers. It's the same idea that uh, Jesus has a different relationship with us. It's still the closeness of a friendship. And yet, at the same time, there are certain boundaries or appropriate barriers that we should have in our relationship with God. We shouldn't necessarily blame God for everything in our lives, uh, nor should we try and manipulate God in the same way that hopefully you don't blame me for everything in your life or try and manipulate me. Um, it's that proper respect uh, for the authority that Jesus Christ has. Because not only is he our friend, but he's also the Lord and ruler of the entire universe. So there is a different relationship there. Now let's talk about knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Now knowledge uh, simply entails a knowing of facts. Uh, so for example, I have this ball. Now whenever I toss up the ball and it comes down, what is the fact? Well, the fact is that the ball went up and then it went down. That's it. Knowledge uh, is just knowing the facts. So, for example, in our faith lives, a knowledge might be, uh, say, for example, the hypostatic union, this idea that Jesus is fully God and fully man, both at the same time in the same person. Uh, it is a mystery. It's hard to understand how that works. Uh, but it is a fact, a, a belief of our faith. Now, next, we need to look at understanding. So say, for example, I take the same ball and I throw it up in the air and it comes down. Knowledge says that the ball went up and down. Understanding helps us to recognize why the ball went up. Well, the ball went up because of my biomechanics. My muscles uh, contracted so that way um, the kinetic energy would be transferred from my arm into the ball and the ball would continue to rise. It hits its apex and then falls down at a rate of 9.8 meters per second in the negative direction. Now, uh, obviously, uh, that's an understanding, and even if you don't understand the physics behind it, uh, an understanding means that you, you sort of recognize uh, why it is that that thing is important. For our faith lives, what that looks like is understanding that Jesus not being fully man means that he doesn't ever suffer or engage in the lives that we really engage in. Anything that he does, he can at any point in time simply escape from because he's not fully man. Uh, or he can cover up his emotions or his tiredness with his divinity. Um, but we believe that all of the joys and sufferings of Jesus Christ were, uh, as a human, fully human. We also believe that Jesus is fully divine. And this is key because if he wasn't fully divine, then the promises that he makes on earth, that he would save us from our sins and bring us to everlasting life, would never actually be able to happen because he wouldn't be able to guarantee that. He would simply be uh, yet another uh, prophet who preaches on behalf of God, but is himself not able to guarantee anything because he himself is not God. Um, so in one instance, we would have a, a God who wasn't willing to take on the very suffering that he imposed on the world, uh, so a God that seeks to still be distant from us. And on the other hand, we have a person who simply lies to us, uh, a phony, a fraud. Um, now, hopefully we can see that this isn't the case, that Jesus has to be both fully divine and fully human, because in either sense, uh, he wouldn't be able to love us as we truly believe he does. And now for wisdom. Wisdom is this idea that we can apply our knowledge and our understanding to the facts, to the case at hand. So for example, say I was going to toss this ball at you. Now, obviously, nobody has hands that they can actually catch and throw the ball back to me, so I'm not going not gonna to try that. But the idea of throwing a ball at somebody requires both my understanding of how a ball might go through the air, as well as the other person's understanding of how a ball might flow through the air. Um, that understanding is then applied to, well, where you place your hands to catch the ball, uh, and then how you throw the ball back. Um, because you understand that it's going to arc and be affected by gravity, and so on and so forth. In a similar way, the knowledge and the understanding of the facts of our faith enable us to apply our faith to daily life. It's easy to understand, for example, that suffering sucks. It's not a hard thing. Um, I was speaking with uh, some friends this weekend, and uh, it came up in my own life, just the problem of evil, the times in which I myself have been uh, rejected by others for no fault of my own. Or say, for example, have experienced some extreme thing, uh, like the death of a loved one. Uh, now, the death of a loved one is uh, never uh, really a, a kind thing or a joyful thing to experience. It's deeply sad. Um, is there a reason for that? Well, certainly not one that I can explain. 
Is there sometimes companionship in that? Well, maybe in a little way, but not in a complete way. Nobody seems to ever be able to understand really what it is like to go through my situation. There's always a distance there. You know, if I didn't believe that Jesus was fully God, I believe that there really is no reason for the suffering or there is no redemptive purpose that could come, that could come from the suffering of a loved one. Um, if Jesus wasn't fully a person, then there truly is no one that accompanies me in my suffering. And yet, because I believe that Jesus is fully human, I believe that he really and truly empathizes with me and walks with me throughout any sufferings that I might go through. And because I'm, I believe that Jesus is fully God, I believe that his ability as fully God takes whatever circumstance happens in our lives and enables it to become purposed for his good. That is not to say that uh, everything happens for a reason. That is also not to say that God does everything, right? Because we believe that evil is an active force in our world. But it is to say that in every situation, God can take whatever it was that happened and he can transform it through his own grace and goodness, um, even mysteriously. Um, because evil does not ever triumph over goodness because the power of the evil one can never match the power of the God who loves us, who loves us so much to become incarnate. Okay, so that's how we apply that uh, knowledge and that understanding to the realities of our day-to-day -day life, that wisdom. Okay, those are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I've provided for you a short video clip from um, Dr. Strange, which I think is excellent and would recommend that you watch it. But it really serves to answer this question of who is the sacrament of confirmation about? And the reality is, is that it's about everyone else. Uh, a fundamental part of our nature as human persons is to give to other people. Uh, we love to give to others. Uh, if you've ever done good for someone else, you know that that was out of a, a desire to love them. There's no really great um, biological or chemical or um, evolutionary reason for why we do such good things. Uh, rather, those good things that we do for others simply come from our own uh, creation. Not as simply biological creatures, but as, as creatures of a divine God who makes us, yes, uh, fully human, but also enables us to have a soul, uh, a spark of God's divine light within each of us. Um, and it's that that's ignited every single time that we go and we love other people. So if you're ever wondering why in the world does it feel good to give to someone, well, it's because the Holy Spirit is continuing to encourage you to do that. Uh, not because it feels biologically good, but because your soul knows that that's its job. That's why the end goal of Christianity is not simply to stay as an isolated community, but rather to go out into the world and to minister to it. Um, and that's what the gift of the Sacrament of Confirmation enables us to do, is to go out into the world and to do God's work, um, to heal the suffering of the brokenhearted, uh, to fix the evils in our world. Uh, you might be thinking, well, Mr. Devillier, there's a lot of evil in the world. And the reality is, it just means that we've got a lot of work to do. We'll never accomplish it in this time, but that's the difference between us, the workers, and the master builder. We're workers, not master builders. We're ministers, not the Messiah. We're prophets of the future, not our own. And one day, it'll get to be unveiled to us as we stand next to Christ in the kingdom to come. Thanks, everybody, for attending today's lecture. Please be attentive to attending uh, the next ones coming up. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.